I've been praying all this week, lay awake at night, woke up thinking about what the Lord would have me to say. And uh, I had come to the men's meeting the other morning and, and I mentioned uh, a series of messages that the Lord had given me this fall on God had a plan for the restoration of the relationship that he had with Adam and Eve. And if the Lord will allow me this weekend in the three services, I'll try to cover seven sermons in three, three messages. I want to lay a little foundation tonight, though, uh, and uh, hopefully you'll uh, get on the telephone tomorrow and call some others to come tomorrow at uh, 2 o'clock. And we won't have seating room. We'll have to fill those chairs up back there and all that. I hope you'll be excited about what God's doing here at Brayton the Gospel Tabernacle this weekend. I'm looking for God to set some people free. Amen. I'm looking for God to heal some folks. Amen. I'm looking for signs and wonders. Because the Word of God said, that these signs shall follow them that believe. Amen. Do I have any believers here tonight? Yeah. Amen. Amen. These signs shall. What do we not understand about the word shall? That's a positive word. It's not maybe. It shall follow them that believe. They shall lay hands on the sick and they what? Shall. And many other miracles and signs. Amen. There it is right there on the thing. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. I said devils. You might be surprised. And there might be somebody here tonight that's got a devil in them. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know what? It said he, he's like a lion. And sometimes devils and sheep clothes. Amen? Amen? So, we might see some of that happen this weekend. I don't know. It's up to God. Amen? Amen. They shall speak with new tongues. Amen. Amen. Give me the next scripture there, brother, number 18. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Amen. 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 We're living way below what God has in store for us. Yes. Amen. Amen. Now, I, I haven't seen any boxes here covered up. I know there are churches that have those. They take that literally. They shall take up serpents, and they, they take up serpents. But I, I don't believe that's really what this, this scripture really said. I think it, it, it applied to... to if, you, if, if a, a serpent accidentally bites you, bites you in the work of the Lord, just do him like, was it Paul? Just threw him in the fire. And it didn't hurt. Amen. And don't drink any deadly thing. If somebody tried to poison you, you didn't know it, God would take care of you. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want, I want to take a little time tonight to lay a little foundation uh, upon this. And... Uh, there, there's a question that I've been asked many times as a minister of the last, since 1970. I can't count probably that high, but anyway, since 1970, I've been trying to preach the gospel. And uh, a lot of people have asked me a, a three-letter word, W-H-Y. Why? Why? Why am I going through this? Why did this happen? Why did that happen? But one of the biggest questions they always ask is, why are we here? Why are we here? Why did God even make man? If he knew he was going to sin in the garden and fall into sin and all of this was going to take place, why did God make man? 1 John 4, 16. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. 
Love is God. God is the greatest. Uh, love is God. God is love, and love is God. You want a definition of love? Study God. Because God is love. Amen? Amen. Amen. I believe love to be the greatest emotion in the whole universe. Love will make you do things you, you never thought you could do. Wasn't long ago on the news in Tampa, this mother was rolling her baby across the street and she heard car tires squealing and, and looked around and here come a speeding car. And what did she do? Her love for that baby caused her to push that stroller out of the way just as the car hit and killed her. She didn't try to get out of the way. She tried to get that thing that she loved out of the way. Love caused her to do that. I've read about men that would be working on a car and have it jacked up and, and the jack would break or whatever and the car would fall and pin them underneath. And I've heard about their sons reaching down and grabbing the bumper of that car and picking that car up where dad could get out from underneath it. I'm talking about love. Love will cause you to do things that you never thought you could do. It's a strong emotion. But one of the most frustrating things in this world is to love and not have that love returned to you. My God. Amen. I don't know how many of you have been through this, but I've been through it. On the school bus one morning, a young lady got on because she had come to that point. She was one grade ahead of me, and, and she had changed from one school to our school, which was a high school. And she got on the bus, and my eyes focused on her, and something flipped inside. And I was in love. I wasn't but 15, but I was in love. And I loved that little girl, but she never loved me. I even saved up my little lunch money sometimes and went without eating and, and saved my little quarters together uh, to buy her a pretty little something and give to her. She accepted to give, but she didn't return the love. That went on for three years and back in those times back in the 60s they let the class that was graduating they put a class will in the yearbook and they would will something to the next class that was coming along you know she put me in her will she said I will Larry Cox's devotion to any poor girl that can stand I know what unreturned love feels like. Amen? Amen. Amen. It makes you unhappy. Stay with it. What did I say God was? Love. 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 Yeah. Do you know that all of his creations, all of his creatures, the angels, the seraphim, and all of them, they don't have the ability to love God. They were formed and created to serve God. There was nothing in the whole universe returning God's love to him. So God said, I will make man and I will give him the ability to love me. You know what you were created for? He was created to be a lover. Amen. Amen. Every one of us was created to be a lover. You know, a lot of us guys, we like to, you know, really think that we're really a lover, you know. But we are created to be lovers. That's the answer to why you're here tonight. That's the answer to the human race. Is God created the human race so that his love might be returned to him. How? My 
much does God love us? How do I love Him? Let's look at His example. John 3.16 For God so loved the world, the world meaning us, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. Everlasting life. He loved. He gave. We show our love to him by giving ourselves to him. Praise the Lord. Yes. That's the first step in showing your love to God is to give yourself to him. He wants you. Like she's saying, Beloved, come away with me. How I long to hold you in my arms. When you're there, I know you'll see. I am the shelter from the storm. I want to walk and talk with you and show you wondrous things you've never known. I've always loved you so. I'll never let you go. Beloved, Come away with me. That's what God is calling tonight. Tonight, God is calling His people to fall in love again with Him. Now, there's some things that happen as time goes on. When you have a wedding, there's a lot of love there, right? I mean, the groom is in love with the bride, and the bride is in love with the groom. And they get married, and they start housekeeping together. By the way, you start housekeeping after you get married. Is that all right? Amen. 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 Oh, me. One or the other. That's God's plan. That's God's plan. You get married and then you housekeep. Amen. I didn't charge you anything for that. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. But something happens over the years. And that love kind of dwells. It's not on fire like it was at the beginning. The husband doesn't look at the wife like he used to. The wife doesn't look at the husband like she used to. There's not that drawing together like it used to be. Because we begin to take each other for granted. And, and, and that's, that's where we are. There are a lot of people going around saying, what's wrong with the church today? Church needs a revival. No, the church needs to just fall in love with God again. Because if you really fall in love with Him, His Word said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Amen. Amen. It'll make a change in your life. You'll want to please Him. Amen. Amen. Glory. The Bible said that in the last days, the love of many would wax cold. But we don't need to use that as an excuse. It should be something that would prompt us to even be more dedicated to God when we look around us and we see the love of many waxing cold. Because it's a sign of the near coming of Christ. It means our working days are numbered. We don't have as much time anymore to reach out and get new people to Christ. Amen. Amen. So our love should be more on fire as we see the groom approaching. Amen. Amen. God had a plan for the restoration of the relationship that he had with Adam and Eve before they sinned. Look in the book of Genesis.
before he created man, he had a plan. He had a plan. He had a plan. Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. John 1 and 1 says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That which we, that was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the Word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it. And bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye may also have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father. Fellowship with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you. Why? That your joy may be full. Amen. Why are God's people full of joy anymore? Lord. Why do we come to church with the pooch mouth and the mullet run? Long face, no smile. There's something wrong. There's something wrong because our fellowship is not right. Our relationship with God is not right. And God wants to restore that relationship with you and I the same relationship that he had with Adam and Eve in the garden. In Genesis, we find the account of God creating man from the dust of the earth and forming woman from the rib of the man. He placed them in the garden of Eden. There was everything that they needed to live throughout eternity. They could have lived there in the garden of Eden and still be living today. And on top of that, on top of the beauty, I can't even imagine what the garden looked like. It was a beautiful place. It had everything that man could desire or want in there to eat. Everything except one little tree. One little tree in the whole garden. God said, don't eat of that. Do you love me enough? Do you love thee, me more than these? Huh? I remember Brother Marlowe's message. That was a wonderful, wonderful message for us tonight. Amen. Amen. And we know what they did. They disobeyed God. But before that, and I don't know exactly how long because I can't find in the Bible anywhere where it tells me exactly how long that Adam and Eve was in the garden before they sinned. I don't know if it was the next day or, or a week or maybe a month. Maybe somebody here might have that answer, but I don't have an answer. But it said that God, now get this, the creator of the universe came down and walked with them in the cool of the day. I, I can imagine the God of the universe comes down and he puts one arm around Eve, one arm around Adam, and they start strolling through the garden. And God says, what would you do today? How many animals did you name today? Did you try that? fruit over there on that tree? How about, how about the berries off that bush right there? How'd they taste? Huh? What are you talking about? I don't know what he's talking about, but he fellowshiped with it. That's what I'm talking about. He had a relationship with it. A relationship. Come on. They loved each other. They had an intimate love relationship. Praise the Lord. Think about it. Try to imagine what kind of relationship they had. Here is the God that is love. They created Adam and Eve and gave them the ability to love him. Yes. 